Well, it was very interesting. And uh, actually, relations between Russia and the UK traditionally of the century is where bumpy relations with ups and downs. At present, uh, there are some signs of improvement of political dialogues. People are meeting uh, in a more regular way. So there is some positive dynamics in our bilateral relations. So we should not be discouraged by ups and downs. The most important thing is that the overall trend is positive. What was the worst time, do you think, for you as ambassador? Oh, I, I would say the worst time was summer 2007. Uh, and uh, uh, when the British government announced some, some measures which were taken against Russia, a kind of sanctions, and of course it was very regretful. But uh, actually, uh, the most important thing that the overall structure of the Russian-British relations survived based on a solid foundation of trade and economic relations, but also mutual cultural attraction. The underlying disagreements, irritants I think you call them, haven't changed. The British would still like to see their main suspect in the Litvinenko spying case extradited, Mr Lugovoy. Russia also has a long list of people it would like to see extradited from Britain. How far is that overshadowing relations? How far can relations be improved while none of that changes? At this time, as I said, uh, these irritants or these uh, uh, sores they're not affecting the development of political dialogues at the highest level. They're not affecting cultural exchanges or trade and economic relations, investment cooperation. But of course, uh, they're like, like a minefield. They can explode at any time. That's why better they removed, better it would be for the, uh, for the bilateral relations in general. So you seem to be saying that these deep tensions that have been between Britain and Russia in previous years, they can somehow be put in a box and everything else about relations, cultural, trade, political, can improve this, without uh, solving these them. These differences, uh, I would say, they, they have not disappeared. They exist, but they are put in a, in a kind of a mental square brackets. We know they're here, but uh, they're not uh, irritating us as much as they did uh, two years ago, three years ago. London is, a, is something of a haven, isn't it, for uh, Russians, whether they're wealthy oligarchs who buy football clubs or national newspapers. What is it about Britain that draws them, do you think? You know, I, I read a few years ago a memoir of a Russian diplomat who worked in London in uh, 19... Uh, Five. And at that time, the Russian government uh, requested the extradition of Mr. Lenin and the ban of the Congress of his political party. But the reply from the British uh, permanent uh, uh, undersecretary was negative. Should it happen, maybe the whole uh, century of 20th, uh, of the whole history of the 20th century could follow the different way. So what you're saying is revolutions can come and go. The Soviet Union can come and go, but difficult tensions underlying relations between Moscow and London remain the same. Uh, that's why uh, we need, uh, when we think about, uh, reflect about our bilateral relations, remember uh, not only the recent years, relatively recent years of the Cold War, but also uh, the more remote history, uh, uh, quite often the uh, interests of Russia and Britain were opposite, but uh, I think both Russia and the UK uh, profited much more when our countries were allies, as it happened during the First World War, during the Second World War.